Happy Friday, everyone. This is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to Friday Sewing School. Today, I'm going to demonstrate and give you a few tips on using several different sewing machine feet. First of all, I wanna thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart for being understanding um, about um, skipping last Friday uh, to spend with my granddaughters. We had an absolutely wonderful day and they do not stay little for long. So I really appreciate your understanding. Interesting. Anyway, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, today we are gonna demonstrate those um, feet for you. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna get right to it. So the first foot I put on here to demonstrate for you is the quarter inch um, hem foot. It's just a little rolled hem it's useful on shears, it's useful on just lightweight fabrics when you don't want a bulky hem. And what you do to get that started is you just um, you just kind of fold it over twice and you're, this is gonna go to the wrong side of the fabric will be up. And then you're just gonna slip this underneath, put the needle down, and you're just gonna go ahead and give it a few stitches to get it started. Okay, then you put the needle down once it's started, and then you just take this piece of fabric and you kind of wind it around the foot. Sometimes it takes a minute to get it going. You wind it around the foot so that it's following the curve that the foot has. Put the presser foot down. And the trick to this is kind of keeping it at, oh, I would say about a 30 degree angle as it goes through. It kind of just, um, you can adjust by moving your finger back and forth like that, how much um, is, how much fabric is going. And that's the key to doing it around a curve too, is to move your finger back and forth as you have less or more fabric. Um, I do it on curve hems all the time, and I've gotten pretty good at it. Um, a lot of people don't use them on curved hems, but you actually can if you practice. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you how we do this. We just go ahead and keep about at about a 30 degree angle there as you go. Now I don't have a, a seam in this, but if, if you get to a bulky part where it doesn't want to go through, then what you're going to do is you're just going to raise up the presser foot, take that out, go over your seam, stop, lift up, wind it through again, and just keep going. That is your rolled hem foot. Let me go ahead and show you the rolled hem here. You have a nice little rolled hem. And on, well, I have black on black, so it's kind of hard to see, but it's a very nice rolled hem. Okay. The next one I want to show you is the Stitch in the Ditch foot, which is a godsend. This one comes with the stitch in the ditch and also a little gizwiz. You can you can change this little black thing out for another one that sets it so that it follows along a quarter of an inch instead of the in the ditch. Let me show you how that works. I stitched a, a seam so you could see um, where the ditch was. I did right side to wrong side so that there'd be a contrast and you can see where that foot needs to guide, glide. Okay. Now my machine is a low shank machine or you know that has a uh, snap-on feet. Not all machines have snap-on feet but I believe most of them do now. I could be wrong about that. Okay, so you just lower your presser foot and then you just keep that little black, can you see that this little black thing sticking up? You just keep that along the ditch. And then you have perfect, whoop, I got off track a little there. 
perfect stitching in the ditch. Don't go fast like I just did. And that's useful if you need to like tack down a facing from the right side. That's where I got off, but that's because I went fast. <laughs> but you can see, you cannot even see the stitching up here. Okay, so that is the stitch in the ditch foot. This is a Janome one, and I'm sure other brands have the same type of thing. Okay, so for a blind hem foot, you're gonna go ahead and press up your hem. And you're gonna do this at the iron. I'm just gonna be in lazy the way this way, but um, just to, just for demonstration purposes, I won't hem it. I mean, I won't iron it, but you're gonna press up your hem and then you're gonna turn it and you're gonna press it again, leaving about a quarter of an inch exposed. And you have already finished your edges too, if you need to. And then you're just going to slip your fabric there and there, put your needle down and sew. And this little white guide keeps it, the fabric where it needs to be for it to catch. And sometimes you have to play a little bit to get it to catch just right. But you can see it's, it's sewn in. Now this is probably gonna show on the other side a bit because it's just cotton. Now once you press that, and if you had pressed it, obviously you would be catching less, but um, it does show on this one a little bit. The trick with this is um, any kind of fabric with a nap, like a flannel or a wool, um, like men's pants um, that are like the heavier, that have just a tiny bit of nap, it works best on those fabrics. It does work on these fabrics, but it's a little bit trickier. And um, if I was doing this for real, I would have pressed it and it wouldn't have been catching such a big chunk of it. So that is the blind hem foot. And it's a, really a godsend. Okay, so next is a piping foot. And for that, you're just going to put your piping between the two pieces of fabric. And of course, you're gonna pin yours. I'm just gonna do this for demonstration, so um, I'm not at the moment, but you're gonna pin it. And you can feel the bump in the fabric where the piping is. You're gonna guide that right in and underneath this little bump here on your foot. And you're gonna make sure that your sewing machine is set for a straight stitch. Put your needle down in and just sew. And the piping will run right along that channel. And it'll be nice and clean where it is. It'll even go around curves. I just made a curve on purpose so you could see. Okay. And this is what it does. Voila! Piping. Now you can also get cording and make piping with that as well, just by um, going ahead and folding it over and you know doing the same thing with the cording right through that little bump. So that is the piping foot. Very, very useful. It's one of those things you don't need a lot, but when you need it, you really need it. So I do own a walking foot, and I think um, that might be demonstrated another day. But I will show you another foot that is actually, I find to be just as helpful to me. Um, I don't, uh, my machine's pretty good, so I don't have to worry about it feeding necessarily, um, feeding the fabric um, unevenly that much. Um, my machine's pretty good at keeping them together. Um, but if you want to, you can use the roller foot and that keeps things from slipping and you just put it on and, and sew along your normal way. Whoops, I, I have this on a zigzag, let me. So 
so you're just gonna go ahead and sew along your normal way and the roller here basically rolls and makes sure that your top layer is fed at the same rate as your bottom layer it's helpful if you have slippery fabrics or um, a lot of layers um, walking foot is essentially better for that but and I do own one I'll show you what they look like I'm not going to demonstrate it today because I actually hate this thing so um, this is a walking foot some people use them for everything I just find it too cumbersome I can't see what I'm doing um, and I find this roller foot to be just as effective for what I do um, but many people swear by the walking foot which the walking foot just walks the fabric on top at the same rate as it's as it's fed in the bottom so um, that's essentially the same kind of thing this is less exact probably but for my for my use I you can see you can watch the roller helping the fabric along and obviously this is cotton so it wouldn't even need it but um, That's a definitely a nice little foot to have. It's just so much easier to pop on and off this little thing than to, this thing has to go around the screw of your needle and it's, yeah, it's a pain. So I just, I use this a lot more, this roller foot. Okay, next I'm gonna do this little button foot. This I find to be very useful when you sew buttons on. Normally you've got an interfaced shirt placket or something. So the trick to this one is that there's, see there's two things here. This actually, instead of hooking, just hooking your, you know, just putting the foot down into the one, you actually, there's a second little thing a little higher at first. And then you can put it down and you've got it in there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a button on this fabric. Now there's little tricks to this, so I'm gonna, so you, what you wanna do is you wanna set it on zigzag. Now I usually start at about uh, two and a half width, and um, then you wanna definitely go the lowest uh, stitch length that you possibly can because you just want it to go back and forth between the holes. So you're going to get your button in there. I sometimes will use a pin kind of as a stylet to, or stylus, stiletto. There. And get to look closer by hand I put the needle down in the fabric okay and then I, the first couple cranks I crank by hand and it ties its you know it secures itself first sometimes you have to wiggle it around a little bit and now it's going to go over to the other side here And then what I do is I just make sure that it's clearing. Most of the buttons will be about two and a half uh, width on the zigzag. Um, I've had a few that have been further apart. Um, but you just want to do the cu first couple. And then once you get that going and you know that the holes are right where they need to be, you can just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then hit your lock stitch. Three, four. And then pull it out and your button is secure. Now what I do is I, before I cut these threads, I take some fray block and I put it all on here and I also hit the threads in the back. And then I trim the threads. And um, because otherwise, over time, 
and a couple washings, these will start to, and once they start, you can just pull the whole button off. So put some fray block on it to keep that from happening. That's a tip. Okay, so I have the buttonhole foot on here and I put my button in the back. Um, I'll show you that when, when we're done where you put the button. And I just want to, I'm gonna put this on the buttonhole setting. And then I'm going to put the fabric in there. Lower the presser foot and go. Till it beeps and then your buttonhole is done. Now what I do is I put fray block on this whole thing before I cut the buttonhole open so that you know keeps it from having all the little threads coming through. Now I want to show you here's the button. It just goes in there and then it this foot tells it actually this thing down here that we pulled down that tells it when to stop and go around the corner so um, you can use any size buttonhole and it works very well and then you can just have your button and your buttonhole and you're all set all right all right I am going to show you the zipper feet this one is for an in invisible zipper and you can see on the back it has a channel similar to the piping foot uh, where the teeth of the invisible zipper goes. This one is a regular zipper foot. And honestly, the zipper foot that came with your machine could look like this. It could look very different. Um, but the gist of it is the same. Um, this one's nice because you can put it on either side and it just basically keeps the foot over here so that you can sew real close to zipper teeth. And that's really the, you know, that's the big advantage of the zipper foot. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is an invisible zipper. So we're gonna pretend that this is the top of a dress that we wanna put an invisible zipper in. So the first thing you're gonna do is you have to think through this. You have to think through how the zipper is going to be. So it's not invisible this way, but it is invisible this way. So what you wanna do is you, you wanna put the zipper in with the bump up so that when it goes like this, it's invisible, okay? So we'll start and this side You don't sew the seam together first. You do this on the seam. You do this and then sew your seam. Oops, I have to put the foot on. All right. One definitely, I always buy them longer too than you need so that you can kind of get these crazy little things out of your way. using the one on this side so that it'll stitch real close to the thing. Okay, so I'm going to put this on a straight stitch. Don't try any other stitch because it'll break your needle. All right, put the needle down into the fabric and you're just gonna guide that zipper right along. And you'll be doing this right on your seam allowance. All right. This is a 
pretend here. So, all right. Then to do the other side, you want it to end up like this, okay? So in order to do that, you need to have this like this, so that when it's sewn, I'm sorry, you need to have this like this, so that when it's sewn, it'll be like that. So we're going to bring and I have to think through that, what I just said every single time, because I cannot tell you how many invisible zippers I have sewn. Let me show you another tip first. Once you do one side, close the zipper. You mark a point, like if it's the waistline or the top of the neckline or whatever, and then you mark it here so that you can know where to put the other half of the zipper so it isn't crooked when you start. All right, so now I'm gonna do this side. And I'm just gonna sew it on. Obviously, I'm not being real careful with seam allowance or anything. You would keep your seam, same seam allowance as your seams. All right, when you're done, then take your two halves here, and I can zip up this zipper, and it is invisible. Obviously, it's not real invisible because it is white. You're not going to put a white one in there, but it's for all intents and purposes, it is invisible. So then you just come along then, and when you do your seam the rest of the way, you just come up right to this. And then if you want to, you can do a little locking stitch here and cut some of that off at the end. But always, always, always buy longer zippers than you need for either kind of zipper. Okay, and I think I have one more to show you. Okay, so this bias tape maker, you're going to want to screw this out to the width of your bias tape. And then you're going to insert for this bias tape foot. You're going to go out further. See, there's just a rolling thing that you just do this, this bias tape foot, and go out a little more than you need to so that you can just kind of then put it in there and now you're just gonna go ahead and slip your bias tape in there. And you wanna go ahead and pull it all the way through until it's gonna be where the needle can grab it. All right, and then once you, once you have it in there, go ahead and tighten it down so that it, it definitely keeps it all together. Okay, so then you're going to put the foot on. I put the tape in first. You need to go a little further with it. Kind of, some of it kind of fell out. You need to make sure that the needle is gonna go down in the bias tape. Okay, and then you're gonna take your fabric that you wanna bind, and you're gonna take and put it in between. A little tricky. But once you get it going, it is awesome. Okay, so you got your fabric in between and your bias tape on top and underneath. And you're just going to kind of get it started here. 
and go. And I will show you. You have to, you have to cut the bias tape. Forgot that part. You have to cut the, the what's left over so that it doesn't have to pull all the way through. All right, so you got a bound edge here. Super simple. All right. All right, that's uh, basically the feet I have to show you today. And I'm going to put my normal foot back on my machine. And um, please leave questions, um, comments. And uh, maybe there's some other feet that there's so many. I mean, they there are so many feet now available. So if there's any others that you want to see, um, a few that really don't need to be demonstrated but can be explained. Um, this is a Teflon foot. This is a Teflon foot and it's for uh, sticky things like leather or vinyl. Um, you'll need that when you um, so bags or any any kind of leather accents. Um, this is a cool little foot. I do not know where I got this foot, but it must have been in my mother's stuff. This is a cool little foot that has a gauge. I don't know. I really don't know what it's called, but um, it would be handy if you were um, wanting to have a gauge so you. I'm guessing those are maybe millimeters. I'm not really sure. Um, I'd have to get a ruler and check, but you could definitely, um, if you wanted to be really exact of where you were lining things up and have a better visual than just these, um, this could be very helpful for you. Uh, let's see. Here's another one. This is an open toe foot and it's clear for a reason. It's for satin stitching. So if you were doing applique and you wanted to do some satin stitching, you would use this open toe so that you could see exactly where you were going. And that's about it. So um, I hope that that helped you understand some of the feet that are available for your machine. There are many, many, many more. Those are just the ones that I happen to use fairly frequently. So um, if you have any questions, please, as always, feel free to email me or post them below. Well, I hope that was helpful and I hope that's inspired you to go and use some of the feet that are in your sewing drawer already or um, purchase the ones that you think um, would be helpful for you. Um, there, as usual, there are links below um, to things, uh, to some of the feet that don't, aren't standard issue with a sewing machine that you can purchase. And um, I just wanna thank you so much for supporting uh, my channel and um, happy sewing.